Here in Idaho, it is freezing cold right now. We have like lows in the single digits and highs in the teens, but I am wearing my fancy pineapple tie somewhat to try to kind of have that mental power to convince myself it's not really as cold. The other reason is because my son is currently serving a mission in Hawaii. And so this tie reminds me of that. And I sent him pictures of the cold, frigid Idaho, and he sends me pictures of 75 degree paradise in Hawaii. But it was interesting because when he was set apart, of course, the stake president, we went and he was reading some of Doctrine and Covenant section four, the verse that says, remember faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. And as he was reading that, for some reason, the story of Ben Franklin popped into my head. Benjamin Franklin is famous for lots of things, primarily being on the hundred dollar bill. I mean, that's a major accomplishment in your life. But one of the things that's interesting about Ben Franklin is early in his life, he identified 13 values that he wanted to live out and to become better at those values. And every week he would focus in on one of those values. And over the course of 52 weeks, if you do one a week for, uh, if you have 13 of them, you go through them four times each. I think so. Yep. One, two, three, four. And so he would go through each of those and he'd really focus in on one of his 13. And while I was sitting there, I thought, you know what? I should do a similar thing with these core values, these attributes that the Savior gave to Joseph Smith in Doctrine and Covenant section four. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. But then I am not so good at doing lots of things. It turns out, as humans, we're terrible at doing lots of things. The concept of multitasking is actually a false notion. You can task switch. Some people task switch better than others. I'm pretty bad at it. Like I got to be really focused in on something. Uh, it drives my family crazy because, you know, if I'm really doing something and somebody comes to me, I'll, I'll you, you can ask my kids. They'll tell you one of my famous sayings is, hey, give me just a minute. Because if I'm really focused in on something and somebody comes to talk to me or something, I'll say, hey, just give me a minute. Sometimes it's very kind. Sometimes it's like, hey, just give me a minute. Sometimes it's less kind, but I'm working on being kind. I decided to narrow that down. And so I narrowed it down to seven core areas that I'm personally trying to develop. And every week I focus in on one of them. That's what my podcast is all about, is focusing in on one of those every week. Things like gratitude, charity, humility, diligence faith, because those are the core concepts that I really want to apply. And in my personal life and in my professional life, I've studied all sorts of things about habits, books like Atomic Habits by James Clear, Tiny Habits by B.J. Fogg, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg and others. There's all these great things about habits. And so I know these habit hacks and right. I've habit hacked my way into doing a hundred push-ups every single day. I do a hundred push-ups every day. I haven't hacked my way into flossing my teeth every day. That was always an area of trouble for me. Every time you go to the dentist, maybe some of you do this, like you go to the dentist and the week before you start flossing really good. But I was like, ah, I got to floss better. So I haven't hacked my way into flossing. I've haven't hacked my way at times into better eating habits. And I kind of in and out of that. But I thought, man, why don't I use these same habit hacks to get better at things like charity, because I started looking at my life and I thought, do I have a habit of acting with charity? I mean, I do charitable things from time to time, but, but I was concerned because I don't know that I had a habit of being charitable and consistently acting with charity. Do I have a habit of consistently showing gratitude beyond just saying, Thanks to my wife for all of the, you know, I mean, every day I could say, you know, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. But do I have a strong habit of showing gratitude? You know, do I have a strong habit? What are the habits of humility? What are the consistent daily, weekly activities that a humble person does? And do I do any of those things? And so I, I was concerned. I also wanted to build in habits of faith and knowledge and personal development because I'm always struck by Doctrine and Covenants 82, whatever level of intelligence we attain unto in this life, it will rise with us in the resurrection. We'll have so much more of the advantage in the world to come. And so I'm like, I want to get a big advantage on the world to come because I'm, I, you know, sometimes I'm kind of behind. So I got to catch up. So I thought maybe I need to learn more. So 
how do I develop those habits in some of those key areas? And so I want to share with you guys three tips, three simple things that you can do to start to develop habits in those areas. The first one is keep it small. (laughs) This is so fascinating because when we talk about creating habits, when we talk about doing new things and accomplishing, turning our visions and our dreams into reality. And then I come on and I say, yeah, but just keep it really small. Don't do anything huge. Don't do anything drastic. Don't do anything crazy. That can sometimes come across a little bit counterintuitive until you start reading God's word in Alma chapter 37. Many of you are already know what's in Alma chapter 37. Many of you, this is a scripture mastery from back in the good old days of scripture mastery, Dr. Alma 37 verses six and seven. But behold, I say unto you by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances, death confound the wise. Now, what I love about this Alma 37 is it comes right on the heels of Alma, it, right on the heels of Alma 36. Weird how that works. It goes Alma 36 and then it goes Alma 37. And in Alma 36, it's the miracle story of Alma the younger. He's now talking to his son and retelling the story of the angel coming to him. You find it in Mosiah chapter 26, and then you find it here, Mosiah 27, I think. So you have this miracle story, this like once in the whole book of Mormon story. I mean, the book of Mormon covers hundreds of years and only one time do we have this miraculous story. It matches similar to Paul in, and in the new Testament. And so very rarely do you get this miracle story of an angel coming and having this incredible conversion story. And right on the hills of that, Alma wants to remind his son Helaman, hey, don't forget it's by small and simple things. As human beings, we tend to become really focused on size and kind of the scale and the timing, right? Which means we want really big things and we want it right now. Size and time matter a lot to us. But listen to how God describes size and time in Alma chapter 37. The Lord doth work by means to bring about his great and eternal purposes. Time. God's dealing in eternity here. When we think about the accomplishments that we need to do, the goals, the vision of what we have, don't forget God is working on an eternal time frame. And it says he works by means. What's the size of these means? Listen to what he says, his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means, the Lord doth confound the wise. He doesn't just say small means. He says very small means done consistently over time. It's not about doing one huge thing on January 3rd. It's not about doing one huge service project that's going to like guarantee you entrance into the celestial kingdom. As best I know, there's only one time where that happened. The story told of the three young men who helped carry all the pioneers across the frozen river. And Brigham Young said, this act alone guarantees salvation for the three young men who did that. That's the only time in history, in any recorded history that I know of scriptural conference talks, where a single act of service was mentioned by a prophet as having that type of outcome. For the rest of us, very small means. Keep it small. If you want to read, if you decide, I want to increase my faith more, it's going to be something small done consistently over time. I want to become more charitable. It's not one big, huge act of charity. It's the small, consistent acts of charity. For me, one of them is gratitude. I want to become a more grateful person. So you know what I do? I write one thank you card a week. Right over there is I have a box of thank you cards and I write one a week. But one mailed, stamped, handwritten, hand-addressed, stamped, sent thank you card. Over time, that gets to be pretty big, right? I mean, that's 52 a year. And do you know how many that is in the eternities that God is dealing with? That's a lot, right? If I had been doing this since the time I was like 25 or 20, right? Yeah. If I'd been doing it for the last 20 years from the time I was 21 until now or 22 until now, 
at 52 a year, I'd have a lot of thank you cards written and sent out. I would have made a big difference. I would have had small and simple means would have had a big thing. Now, I started it later in my life. I just started it last year, but 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when I'm in my 70s, one card a week sent out, that has a big difference. It's not a huge thing. I'm not sending out 50 thank you cards a day, just small, simple things, one a week. You want to, if you want to increase prayer, it's going to come down to one prayer a day. If you want to increase scripture study, it's going to come down to small. I know some people love to do the fun challenge where they read the, you know, tons of scriptures and they just read and read and try to read the Book of Mormon in a short period of time. And that's great. If you want to have long-term increases in your understanding of the scriptures, your connection with God, your relationship with the Savior because of your understanding and your connection with God's word, it's going to be small, very small means is what Alma says. Tip number one, keep it small. So identify your vision, identify your goal, identify where you want to go, and then bring it down as small as you possibly can. I mentioned I do 100 push-ups a day. When I first started that habit, I could do exactly zero push-ups a day. And so I started with five. If I could do five push-ups a day, and I've built up from there, but I started with very small means. Thank you cards, one a week, right? Very small means. To increase my humility, I write three things a day of things I'm grateful for and things other people have done for me. Very small, not a thousand, not a hundred, three, three a day. That's it. Very small. So step number one, keep it small. Step number two, make it easy. The thing that you want to do differently, the thing that you want to improve on, the action that you want to take, make it easier to do, and you're more likely to do it. I'll give you a couple of examples from my own life. I mentioned I'd like to send out thank you cards. How did I make it easy. I went on Amazon and I ordered a box of 50 thank you cards and they're right there. I could take one step and grab my thank you cards. I don't have them in a cupboard. I don't have them on my shelf. I don't have them in a drawer because when I put things in cupboards and shelves and drawers, they're hidden. I have the same problem with taking a vitamin every day. My vitamin sits in a cupboard and I'll go like a week because I don't see it. It's not right in front of my face. If I stick my vitamin out on the counter, Then I take it every day, but my wife loves a nice, clean, pristine counter. And my vitamins, I got to find a better place to put my vitamins, but my thank you cards are right there. And so I know, boom, there they are. Same thing with my pushups. I bought these little pushup bars to help me do pushups. They're literally sitting right there. One step, I could be at my pushup bars so that it's incredibly easy for me when I get up and I look down and there's my pushup bars, boom, five pushups. I made it as easy as possible. God did the same thing for the Israelites when you read in Exodus. I love this story of manna. The story of manna is so fascinating because of how easy it was. How do we feed thousands of people for 40 years? Well, we make it very easy. All they had to do was they had to walk out their door and pick up this round thing, Exodus 16, 14. When the dew came off, Upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing. The children of Israel saw it and they said to one another, it's manna, which means, what is it? They had no idea what it is. They literally called it, what is it? What is it? That's what they called it, manna. For they knew not what it was. And what did they have to do? They had to go out and they had to grab an omer full every day. Small and easy. I love what it says here. Moses said, let no man leave it till the morning, which means don't grab extra and say, "Mm, I'm going to sleep in tomorrow and I'm going to have my leftover manna. Let no man leave it till the morning. You got to eat it all today. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it until morning and it bred worms and stank. If they left it till the next morning, it had gone bad. But then this miracle happens on Saturday nights. It turns out that the the day before the Sabbath, they could take twice as much, bake that which you will bake today, see that you will see, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until morning. And if they did that, then the next morning, it wasn't bad, a miracle that God did for the children of Israel. So one time they could let it go an extra day, but it was so easy. They just had to walk out, grab an omer full, And that was it every day. 
but they couldn't, it, it wasn't one big thing. They weren't grabbing a week's worth in one day. They weren't grabbing a month's worth in one day. It wasn't like a trip to the grocery store where they were just piling it all in and thinking, okay, I'm, you know, this is going to last us. No, every day, very simple, very small. Go out, grab one Omer full. It's right there. It's right outside your door. Boom. This is true for maybe some of the habits that you want to do. If you want to make it easier to read your scriptures, put your scriptures in a place, put your scriptures where your TV remote normally is and put your TV remote in the drawer or cupboard somewhere. Make it easier to grab your scriptures than to grab your TV remote. If you want to make it easier to do come follow me study with your family every week, put it in a, at a specific time and location every more or every Sunday, immediately following church. We're going to do this every Sunday, immediately before church, we're going to do this, make it very simple. So it's not like, oh, sometime we'll do it. No, the children of Israel didn't go grab manna sometime. They grabbed it at a specific time and a specific place. It was very easy, very simple, very basic because God knows that's kind of how we operate. If it's easy, we'll do it. If it's hard, less likely we'll do it. And so take whatever it is that you want to do more of and make it easier, make it more present, make it more visible. I have my scriptures. They sit right here next to me on my desk so that when I have a couple of minutes, boom, I grab it. I just did this on my phone recently. I moved some apps around on my phone so that now on my home screen, I have three apps that I really want to get to often. And I hid all of my social media apps. So I have to kind of swipe and go into a folder and swipe to get to all my social media. Because right on my front screen on my phone, I've got my a big one of the link to come follow me. I've got my Kindle app so I can read more and my Audible app so I can listen to good books more often. And I've buried some of my other apps that I don't want as much deep in my phone. And so right here on the front screen of my phone, I made it easier to get to some of the core apps that I really want to get to. You could even put the Arturo House app right on your home screen and it'll make it much easier for you to access great content all the time. Make it easy. One other little tip to make it easy. I use this all the time. This is my weekly habit tracker. And I mentioned that I focus in on one core development idea, one core characteristic every week. And so I just write down a habit or two that I want to do that week. And then a, a tracker is amazing in helping us actually achieve the thing. And so I just have down here, did I complete the habit and did I celebrate that habit? And so I just write down, send out, you know, one card. I only have to check that one time, but my, my daily gratitude. And then I boom, mark it every day that I did it. Or maybe it's two minutes of scripture study and boom, mark every day that I did it. Or maybe it's you know, two minutes of reading the come follow me content for the week. And boom, I marked that I did. If you give yourself a tracker, you're much more likely to actually do it. So I leave this right here on my desk. I have my three habits written out that I want to focus on that week. And then I can mark it off and making it visible and making it easy is very effective. Okay. Last one. So number one was make it small. Number two was make it easy. Here it is. Keep it small. Make it easy. The last one is celebrate small wins. We oftentimes don't do this very well. I think sometimes it's because we want to focus on being humble. And we think if we kind of celebrate things, then we're not being very humble. I love the line from C.S. Lewis. He said, humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And so it's not that you have to put yourself down. It's not that you have to diminish yourself. We don't serve God by being small. We don't serve God by reducing our own amazing contribution. We best serve God by fully embracing our own unique talents and skills, by fully embracing our own unique ability to contribute to the lives of others and then going and doing it. But what we can do to increase the likelihood that we'll do a specific action again is to celebrate it immediately following the action. So I send my, I do my little thank you card. I go, I put it in to the mailbox and I just, yes, as I'm walking back from the mailbox, yes, celebrate my small win. I send my thank you card for the week. Yes. I do my five little push-ups, even though it's just five push-ups. I just do five push-ups and I go, yeah, nice job. There you go. Hey, you did your five push-ups. I celebrate a small win. About a decade ago, I ran a marathon. If you're and this is a good example. If you're running a marathon and you decide I'm going to wait and celebrate once I cross the finish line of the marathon, you might never get there. 
So you got to celebrate every small accomplishment along the way. The first time you run a mile, the first time you run five miles, the first time you run for 30 straight minutes, the first time you hit 13 miles, all right? All of these small accomplishments, double digit miles, that's a big one. First time I hit 10 miles, I still remember that day. Celebrate that. The first time you do a come follow me lesson together as a family, celebrate. First time you get two in two weeks in a row, celebrate. First time you read your scriptures for five straight days, celebrate. First time you read your scriptures for two straight days, celebrate. Celebrate every day, celebrate. Because the more you kind of tell yourself, yes, you're doing good. Nice job. Way to go. And that's all it's got to be. It's just a yes. The more often you do that, it wires into your brain. That's an activity that brings positive results. And it will wire your brain to want to do that activity again. So make it as small as possible and celebrate every time it happens. You read your scriptures for two minutes. Yes. You read your scriptures for four, two, you know, two minutes, three days in a row. Yes, I'm doing good. Keep it up. Keep going. Mark it on your tracker. You mark it on your tracker. You celebrate. Yes. And you'll do it again more likely. So keep it small. Make it easier and then celebrate small wins. And you're much more likely to continue to do those things over time. As I've done these things, as I've tried to implement these small things, I can testify to what uh, Alma told his son, small and simple things bring about great things. And it helps me feel happier and more productive in my day and share that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 